Okay, so we are back. Hopefully you guys are still here after this little uh, technical issue. We will see if we're back online. Yep. Hopefully we are, and hopefully mostly everyone is here still. Mark S. is still here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shut down again. It did shut down again, everybody. So hopefully everybody can see us. Can everybody see us loud and proud real quick? <laughs> oh, good news is we only have about 10 more minutes in this stream, so... Yeah. So Anyhow, if it happens but, again, uh, we'll just probably call that good for yeah, this evening. Yeah, we'll just call it again. Close so. to the end of our two-hour mark. But. Yeah, I think I think we're just still having some computer issues uh, syncing up with the OBS software and things. So we're gonna have to take and work on that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, thank you everybody for joining us in on this stream. Um, you know. Thank you for all your support and all your questions. Hopefully we brought enough value before our camera, before our equipment mm -hmm. crashed on mm -hmm. us. And uh, you know, like I said, if it deletes again, just go home. Yeah, enjoy you know, the rest of your evening. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. You know, I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, as you can pop up the chat, yeah. I like to go back yeah. to that. So. That way we could keep um, an eye on the CPU. Yep. Yeah, but, uh, you know, again, thank you all so much for joining us and stuff. Uh, we might have enough time. I think it may be overheating, uh, Mark S. That's it's, a good thing. And it might be video cards getting hot. Uh, you know, it's a... Oh, that, is, that is warm, too. But the CPU yeah. is running about 52%. So Yeah, the CPU is running about fit, between 47 and 52% on the computer. So we're not we computer always, gurus. Yeah, so. I was going to say, if it's the video card getting hot, we could always swap out the video cards, maybe with the cool one but yeah um, maybe but oh well but you know we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about yeah. that so <laughs> not tonight technical anyhow, issue sorry you yeah we'll have to keep working at this so this way we can get it done but uh you know we got an hour and a half before it dropped down on us this time so we may not be able to do two hours mm -hmm. until we get it figured out i don't know we were doing two hours prior but mm -hmm. we're doing a bunch of two hour live streams so can everybody still see us comment if you can still see us and it hasn't dropped out on us you. So the chat slowed up there. Oh, sorry, okay, we got thirteen. So yep. some people. So, so we got thirteen it. people still here. So mm -hmm. so if you can see us and the stream is still coming through, give us a little thumbs up in the comment section if you would, real quick. Um, yeah. See if we're not just talking to dead airspace, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's not showing much currently, but okay. no, it's not showing much currently. So who knows what that is? Oh, okay, there we go. We got two thumbs up. Good. Good. So, all right. Um, yeah, so if anybody has any sort of questions, now's the time to pose them real quick. We'll try to answer them with the, about the eight yep. minutes we have left, and hopefully it won't crash on us again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and we'll see what we can do. But other than that, um, yeah, keep trying your backup. Good. Audio and video, good. Good. I keep trying your backup. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, again, going to put it out there. Again, you know, if you haven't got the Blacksmith Cheat Sheet, you're running your business, you need help with tags and stuff, do that. Yep. Jessica has some other cool stuff coming out, some e-books and things, uh, e-courses mm -hmm. to help your business grow. That's going to be cool. Be looking for that in several months. Um, yep. You know. uh, let's see. Oh, down in the description of this video, mm -hmm. I do have my video linked for five tips for taking some good yep. photographs. Taking good photographs, yep. Check that out. If you're looking to upgrade your camera gear, um, what we use is down in the description as well. So mm -hmm. take a look at that. Uh, the Nikon, I didn't get to finish talking about it, but yep. um, I do recommend uh, the lens I like to use the most is a 35, I think that's a 35 millimeter prime lens. Uh, yep. Which just means it doesn't zoom. You just have to physically walk closer to the item. But it has a really great bokeh for giving kind of a yep. blurry look. And for those that aren't up on it, bokeh means a blurry background. So mm -hmm. it really makes the image, what you're trying to take and get in focus, very sharp. Very yes. sharp image. Yeah, yeah. and pretty much everything you see in our store is what <laughs> I've used the Nikon for. <laughs> Keep Devers, you've been pacing the floor looking for phone service. <laughs> no, it was all on our end and we apologize for the technical issues we're having. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that was, it's a pain when technology doesn't want to work out for us, especially after you spent the kind of money we've spent on it, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But we'll have to get that fixed, so. Yeah, woo, I'm back, cool. Good to have you back, Susan Ellis, for the last few minutes of our live stream here thank you for being here again yeah. 
Oh, Ben TMC says try one of those fan bases. Yeah, they actually make a little base with built-in yep. fans. That could help. Yep. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to have to do something like that yeah. just to try, try to eliminate whatever mm-hmm. we can out of it. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, if, you know, Jessica, she's, we've used this D7000 for a lot of years now to take mm-hmm. all those really great blurry background shots that you've seen mm-hmm. uh, on our website, on all our little... Uh, you know, on all of our listings, if you will, that's that's what we've used, uh, and we've mm-hmm. used predominantly that lens there. Yeah, it's um, the a Nikkor uh, fifty five or fifty millimeter. Um, yeah, it's fifty millimeter, not thirty five millimeter. millimeter but that's what I thought. yeah, and then this one, uh, we haven't gotten any anything that we need real long range shots. Really all this and do doors. this. This is this is actually a zoom lens, so you can go from 70 millimeter all the way to 300 millimeter, mm-hmm. uh, and so you can get really out there with mm-hmm. this thing and get it really focused in. Uh, but like I said, we're not wedding photographers or anything like that, so yeah, <laughs> we don't need that much yeah. out there. So close up does well. Yeah, we close up much. does well. Uh, you want to frame what it is. Um, you want to frame. I'll walk that with this. You can talk a little bit about framing. Framing your mm-hmm. shot up, that's the important part yeah. with these cameras. Yeah, definitely. You want your item to fill most of the screen. Uh, you don't want to cut off like the ends there. of your items. Um, you also don't want to be so far away that your item looks like a tiny little ant on your on your photograph, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. And then also, like I talk about, the, the video I do have linked down in the description, it talks kind of about the rule of thirds, like dividing your screen into thirds. And then like trying to place the focus of your item on one of those intersections yeah. uh, to get a really nicely set photograph. Yeah. Ben Toombs asked, is it bad that I gave up on you after five seconds, LOL? <laughs> no, we just know where your loyalty lies. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you did come back. We do have that to your credit, yes, sir. Yes, he does. Uh, thank you very There's, much. Yeah, so. 16 came back. So. 16 mm-hmm. came back. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yep, there is a handful of you left on the stream. Right now it says there's 16 of you back, so that's good. That's mm-hmm. good. We don't know how many was here as a peak of the last number. It's but around 32. I about 32. That is an awesome number. So mm-hmm. thank you all for sharing the stream. If you did share the stream, yeah, you know, oh, and uh, joining us on a Monday night. Oh. Yeah, and thank you for the super chats, everybody who gave us a super chat. Yep. We appreciate that. Yep, every bit helps, and every bit helps us continue to be able to do this and... Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, offer this as a service to the blacksmithing community. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that I feel is the most underserved when it comes to uh, business. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of guys, you know, thank God that's going out the door. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, if you'd ask them about their business or ask about what items sell well and things like that, you'd never get a good answer from mm-hmm. anybody. You know, ah, oh, I don't really sell it for that much or this or that. And it was a lot of mystique and trying to keep it to themselves uh, because, you know, I mean, heck, at that time you're going to trade shows and craft shows and, you know, last thing you want to see is another blacksmith at a trade show mm-hmm. showing you up on price and offering your same iron work, yeah. you know, across the road from you. But in the days of online marketing now and where we're at now in this world, you guys can market it to whatever you need to get out of it uh and you know stuff like this i'm very open if you know you want to know what something of mine sells for i'll take you right to my website i'll show you yeah. uh, you can ask me it's how much it costs me in materials <laughs> mm-hmm. in time and sweat equity and i'm going to tell you mm-hmm. um you know because basically basically put there is 7.7 billion people as i've been made aware to on this mm-hmm. planet Mm-hmm. So, you know, I could not possibly, even if they all wanted my ironwork, could I service them all? Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is a big pie out there, and everybody can get hungry, and everybody mm-hmm. can get them some. Mm-hmm. So, and that's mm-hmm. my firm belief on that, and that's what we hope to keep bringing to people every single day mm-hmm. with our videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, Susan Ellis has a question for me. She yeah, says, Jessica, do you actually enjoy all of the online stuff, or have you sucked it up and done what is needed to be done to help the business? Um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm actually, if you ask Roy about my Good hobbies, question. that is a great question. Uh, as Roy, I'll tell you, I am like a hobby jumper, um, and I actually, I just love the, I love searching out how to do things and like, 
you know, uh, once I get, once I get really good at something, I kind of start finding it boring. But uh, just with doing all the online stuff, like there's just so many avenues and I get such, um, such a chance for uh, variety and the different types mm -hmm. of things I do from writing, photography, uh, you know, the SEOs. I, I kind of, I find that fun being able to rank at the top of the search engine, you know, uh, part of Mother's Day, Roy and, actually, Roy and I actually, we were looking at SEO tags and he's like, why are we doing this? It's Mother's Day. And it's yeah. like, you know, I was just, I got a blast. So she, so she worked on Mother's Day because she enjoyed yeah, it. So. I did. Yeah. yeah um, so. Kind but, of a duplicity question there. It's yeah, kind of just helped over time. So. But there's parts I enjoy. There's parts I don't enjoy. Um, but you know, you just, the bookkeeping, you just yeah. get past it. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> you, you gotta get it done. Basically so. put taxes, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Keith Devers, yeah, uh, you know, selling at flea markets, the competition, right, and stuff like that. You know, basically, this is this is my thing. Uh, if you're trying to fish, if there's 50 people fishing at a koi pond, and there's only three koi in the pond, you're in the wrong market. You're in the wrong market. Uh, the internet opens it up to there's 50 people or there's 5 billion people fishing an ocean that could swallow them all alive where they are, where the, they are barely anything. They're that insignificant because the ocean is just teeming full of fish, mm -hmm. right? Just teeming full of fish. And that's the way the online world works. That's why we're highly encouraging people to get online uh, because that is where your 21st or 22nd century business is going to be. Uh, we did a live stream where we talked about brick and mortar is dead, and, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to die. It's going to die off. It's just the process of technology and time. Mm -hmm. You know, I buy stuff now on my cell phone. Yeah. You know, I buy stuff on the computer and have it shipped direct to the house. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. You know, and and that's where people are going now. Uh, you know, it's less of the brick and mortar. Um, you know, you can still do craft shows and they can still do well. And the good news is, is the people who are still marketing at the craft shows, eventually will be the last ones on the boat, and so therefore you will get a boost in sales right before it ends. Mm -hmm. Right before it ends. But a lot of people are doing their shopping online now, and you're missing out on a huge opportunity unless you get yourself some sort of online presence uh, and try to try to work towards that, and it can really help build you up there. Mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, yeah. Think of, think of it in that way. Online, ocean. Craft show, koi pond. You know. There's three minnows in a jar, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody's got a hook, line, and sinker, and they're trying to get one of those three minnows to bite on it, mm -hmm. right? And so um, that's that's how to look at those sort of things. Obviously, the bigger venue you can be at, the more your chances are. It all comes down to data and foot traffic. It comes down to statistics. you got to have, you know, 5,000 people walk by your booth to, get, you know, leverage one-tenth of a percent of those people, mm -hmm. you know, of 5,000 people. Yeah. You know, to buy something of yours, to make your booth money back and things like that. So mm -hmm. kind of a tough thing to do there. <laughs> Bodie. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you, Bodie. <laughs> Great to see you on the end of this stream almost. We'll go just a little bit longer until it cuts out, I guess, again, um, to make up for the 10 minutes or 20 lost. minutes that yeah, we lost. Pressure. Sorry, guys. So, what uh, we got here? Wade Tabeski says, how long have you been in business by Sahabi? Or versus, like total, but yeah, I think that meant versus a hobby. Versus a hobby. Mm -hmm. I did it as a hobby exclusively for three years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been exactly. doing this a decade, so that's seven years mm -hmm. as a business. There was a transition year there on that on year number four where it was hobby slash business mm -hmm. yeah, and then the then six years came around we were solid mm -hmm. this so i've been in business for six years doing blacksmithing specifically yeah so we before then we bought and sold and traded and did stuff on ebay with garage sale and auction mm -hmm. items and things like that that was prior to that and so that's been since I mean, we've been married, mm -hmm. pretty much. So we're coming yeah. up on eleven years this year in July. So yep, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, Bodie says graduating in a week. Congratulations! Congratulations, mm -hmm. Bodie. Now you can devote more time to me, <laughs> right? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
or actually getting a real job in life, huh? Yeah, yeah. See how for yourself. For summer break, you know, senioritis and everything. Yeah, senioritis, is that what it's called? Yep, that's what it's called. Yep. Yeah, we ain't seen Bodie in a while, and it's, you know. Well, yeah, haven't seen him in a while. He hasn't, he hasn't got to use his band hammer on anybody. No. In a long time, Bodie. I don't know if there was anybody here that needed it, though. <laughs> there wasn't anybody, thank God, in this stream that needed it. Everybody's been so. great. There's been some really great questions. This live stream and last live stream and in the mm -hmm. business live stream. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. keep the, the good questions coming. You know, if you think of any of them, mm -hmm. jot them down and bring them next Monday. Yep. Got some stuff there, huh? Huh? Uh, let's see. Bodie's first. Very busy with school, but I just got a full ride scholarship for industrial maintenance. So now I get to be busy with college. LOL. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. Congratulations on that. Everybody give Bodie a good hand clap for that. That's a quite an accomplishment for a young man. So, um, Michael Martin, I have a peculiar question to ask. I forged things by hand as it would have been. So do you know how to forge a lead screw or a lead screw as mm -hmm. in a vice would have been made? Uh, so there's a couple different ways. Mainly they would have been cut threads. They wouldn't have been forged in... Uh, one way that you could do it is you can wrap it with a, you can wrap flat-ish like stock and braise it to a rod for a screw, so in the pitch, and then you reverse wrap that for what goes into the actual screw box of the vise and braise it in place when that screw is taken out. Uh, that's one way of doing that uh, for the blacksmithing side of things. Uh, usually uh, lead screws are not forged that the, they're just not there's too much material need to be put in specific areas for forging to work on that it's usually either cut threads or it would have been built up threads like that yep hopefully that helps you Michael Martin I do miss swinging the band hammer <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Thank you all for your claps there for Bodhi. He deserves it. Yeah, he deserves mm -hmm. it. And now he's crying. We made Bodhi he's cry. So happy he's crying. He's so happy he's crying. That's the emoji. <laughs> I still need that emoji dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up for the band hammer, huh? Mm -hmm. Or thumbs up for hammering. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, we really hope you all enjoyed this stream. And, you know, we really greatly appreciate having you all as part of our community. And, uh, you know, we really hope you guys are getting a lot of value out of what we're doing here. Um, I think we must be doing something right. Lord's leading nearly over 21,000. And I just tacked 207 of you um, now on the channel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing, uh, amazing that there's 21,000 people. Uh, and actually 28% of that 21,207 people are where all, most of our watch time come from, which mm -hmm. is almost unheard of on YouTube to get nearly 30% engagement from your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is amazing. It's amazing, and that comes from you all, engaging with us and being part of the community and feeling like this is your channel because it, because it, I mean, it really is. That's what we show up for. Uh, if you didn't care to watch any of our stuff, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we got a full business we could run ourselves. But, you know, we're we're more than happy to take and be here for everybody and uh, help you guys grow your businesses mm -hmm. uh, on this and uh, help you grow in your smithing skill as well with the teaching so and there's some exciting stuff in the future hopefully um, that the Lord's working out isn't he honey mm -hmm. and so we'll see we'll see how that goes you yeah. know so maybe some classes and workshops will be in the future mm -hmm. very very soon <laughs> What else you got, honey? Sure. Wade, else? Yeah, Wade Tavosky says, what got you started in blacksmithing? Uh, so that has been, it was a childhood thing of mine. I found it absolutely intriguing. I've always been very mechanical. It wasn't until much later on when I got married. Obviously, I was a little kid. I went to a historical village here in Ohio called Carriage Hill. Uh, saw a blacksmith, talked his ear off for like eight hours straight while my parents mm. wandered around. Um, so I was his, he was my babysitter pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, so they come back, pick me up and I wanted to be a blacksmith. And of course that kind of got shut out by me being a teenager and going and doing other stuff. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until we got married, I was a skateboarder <laughs> and people don't know that. I even competed in a local X games at one point in time. Um, but, and then I got married mm -hmm. and I came out here 
And we made the mistake of going to Carriage Hill again, a historical <laughs> site. I'm like, oh, yeah, this would be cool. I think I remember this when I was real young. Mistake. And I about? stood there and I bored her to death for about um, four hours talking to the blacksmith, <laughs> didn't I, at the shop? Yeah. But it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Got you back in. And it. then uh, I pestered her, her for about six months after that. I mean, I pestered her <laughs> a lot about, oh, wouldn't it be so cool? Oh, man, oh, man, did you see that and the way that guy bent that? And oh, man, that'd be so mm-hmm. awesome. And, you know, this is 10 years ago, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, we weren't married real long, but. Uh, we weren't married even a year yet when she called me up. I was in the middle of an attic doing HVAC work and, and I uh, had a roofing nail in the back of my scalp and I was trying to run a refrigerant line and, and sweating and itching and she calls me up out of the blue and she's like, guess what, honey? And I'm like, what, Jess? And she's like, she told me, she's like, guess what? I just spent $150 at a garage sale. And I said, you did what? <laughs> You know, and uh, I kind of chewed on her a little bit, and I got to chew shoe leather later on when I got home, didn't I? Uh-huh. Uh, when I saw loaded up in the back of a pickup truck a beautiful forge that you all know and love and see on the channel all the time. So that's the backstory on that, and it got me started. And I started with a little Harbor Freight anvil, and then you know it just went Out from the there. Yard, under the tree. Yep. We do under have... the sprawling. Uh, uh-huh. uh, mulberry tree yeah. is what it is <laughs> it wasn't a chestnut but it's a mulberry but yeah, yeah um, we, and that's how it started we so. do have a video uh my, my roy's first shop it's titled my first shop and the behind the scenes at christ center i works playlist so anybody <laughs> wants to see his first shop um yep. there's a video on that <laughs> see what i said Roy, I pester Sarah about blacksmithing too. Oh, well. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to do. Probably, uh, so, yeah. Probably every blacksmith a little bit. If yep. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's about every blacksmith for real. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I, I pester Jess to death about it. You know, and of course, she, you know, she being a great wife, she, she let me get away with a lot mm-hmm. uh, when it comes mm-hmm. to it. So it did take a while to get her over the tool buying thing. Uh, she was very frugal when it came to that. Uh, until I start bringing in some money, and when I start bringing in some money, she's like, "Oh, get whatever tool you need." Yeah, uh, you know, within reason, of course. Right. You know, whatever we still need to eat for the month, so yeah. yeah. Hey, Rigid Ironworks, good to have you here. I'm glad you're late, but made it. You missed the big blackout we had I did. earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, how many are we back up to now? I'm just curious. Uh, twenty. We're up to twenty people yeah. watching. Wow, that's a nice We're, recovery. Yeah. yeah. Back. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, last Friday night live stream, I mean, we were getting pretty close. We were an hour in or whatever. It was amazing. There was a lot of people gone yeah. and never came back after we, like, oh, after it blinked out. They're like, we're out of here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know, we were like close to 52 or 60 or something. And I think we had 60. like, I think we had like eight people show back up, you know, or stay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really nice. How about eight people? What you got, honey? Can you read that? Uh, Dustin Dixon says, went to culinary school for a while, and I got blackballed from the industry three months on my internship for self-defense because I wouldn't stand still for a chef knife to connect with my school. (laughs) Sounds pretty risque. That's quite the story. (laughs) Dustin Dixon, that's where I started blacksmithing. Cool. Susan says, I'm the one who does the pestering. He needs to get the forge up and running so he can retire. (laughs) (laughs) Good, good. Pester, pester away. That's friendly encouragement, right? Yeah, friendly (laughs) encouragement. A nudge, a nudge a little bit. And if that don't work, use the frying pan. (laughs) Or a big stick or whatever you got at hand. Keith Dever says, is it normal for a blacksmith to flip the meat on the grill with his favorite songs, LOL? (laughs) You know, I don't think I've ever done that. You have it. I'll, I'll, have have to do that. I'll have to do that next time we have company over. Just get like a greasy pair of blacksmith tongs from my <laughs> shop. And just be like, ah, oh, tasty. <laughs> I have to like wipe yep. them off first. Not only is it flame kiss, but blacksmith kiss. There you <laughs> go. Mark S says, my wife does amazing work with clay. I would be outdone if she worked at the anvil. <laughs> well, you all seen Jessica's skills and abilities. Oh. Uh, not much to speak of, I would say, but <laughs> yeah, oh, well, she outdoes me. She's a good learner. She um, picks up no. quick, so no, I don't have to. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Good stuff. I just did. LOL. That's funny. <laughs> So, well, I think we're going to have to wrap up so we can get our kids in bed. Yeah. Do you think we ought to do that? I think we yeah. ought to, yeah. They've been good. They've been watching a movie while we've been live streaming. So yep. they've been really good kids. So, can't beat that. So, And I'll answer this last question here. Wade Takowski uh, uh, said, what do you recommend to start with coal, wood, or gas? Budget-minded. Uh, basically, you can't go wrong with coal. Uh, wood, you'll use a lot of it. So if you're around tree country, that's great. You can bet you'll be cheaper than coal. If you're around coal country, I would go with coal. If you're in the city, I go with gas. Uh, as far as budget-minded, there's really economical gas forges out there that you can get from a ton of different ma manufacturers. And if you're just getting started, you need to buy a gas forge. You don't need to build one. Um, you know, there's stuff like little micro one brick forges and stuff like that. I've got videos of that on the channel, and that's a good way of doing it if you're going to try to build, like, quote unquote, do a DIY forge, um, and those will work out really well for you. Um, but in general, to burn dollar for dollar coal, it is for the amount of BTU out output that there is. If you've got good smithing by Munimus blacksmith coal, then it will dollar for dollar outperform the other two options. Uh, you know, it, the only time that it doesn't do that is when you have something like production work to do. And if you got a lot of production work, uh, gas forge is gonna be better in that result. You're gonna actually be able to put the, the coal, uh, you'll be able to put multiple billets of something and let them all heat up at once where the coal forge might be a little harder to manage that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you let them stay up, it'll be fine. No! <laughs> if it was the weekend, I wouldn't be so concerned, but it is Monday, yeah. so... Taking parenting tips from an 18-year-old, Bodie. Yeah. Yeah. We've been at this game a little longer, bud. <laughs> that we've got a daughter that's eight this year. Mm. Think about that. We're old. Or we're getting older. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm, she says yeah, yeah. I'm 30 this year I'm 30 this year I've got a daughter at eight we started young so mm -hmm. any idea when you'll be able to purchase the clip on microphone um, that would be a great idea so the clip on microphone system that we're looking to get that will work best with our setup is just a touch over $400 for one mic mm -hmm. um, for it to pick up one mic and so we need a total of two mics if we're going to do this type of thing where we come in with really yeah. great audio. Um, so that's right around six to eight hundred bucks to total to get set up mm -hmm. with the setup that will work best with what we've got. Yeah. And so we're a little taxed on the budget right now. Um, mm -hmm. The super chats have been piling up and that's been helping out a lot mm -hmm. and buy up a lot of this equipment, help us recover from the nearly all our uh, yeah. yeah I think we spent about twelve hundred dollars this last mm -hmm. go round for all the live stream equipment and the new camera and the stuff mm -hmm. like that so um, and a lot of that we had a lot of support come in from super chats that really went to pay mm -hmm. pay back a good chunk of that so thank you to everybody out there so mm -hmm. um, so I would say I don't know we're probably looking out maybe two three months yet yeah, I would say maybe. Gotta gotta stockpile up enough that we can make another big purchase. We definitely want to, mm -hmm. um, you know, because that, <clears throat> you know. Yeah, it would be nicer. For, I'm sure yeah. for the live streams for yep. it to quiet down the hammering a bit. Yeah, and you know the problem with the microphone we're using, it's a great microphone, but it'll pick up a gnat farting across the mm -hmm. room, you know. And so around hammering, that comes in super hot when we're hammering. I talk really loud and there's no control so over my volume. Yeah, she's, they're probably getting scratched yeah. and noises right there. Well, but maybe. It didn't um, bump against anything. Yeah. <laughs> and now when we sat down. Anyways, yeah. yeah, so it does have like really great mic. The great thing about lapel mics is that they only pick up your voice. So somebody could be clapping their hands across the shop somewhere and you're not going to hear them. You're going to hear my voice nice mm -hmm. and clear and you might hear some related anvil sounds, but mm -hmm. that's it. And then when Jessica speaks, you'll hear her voice very nice and clear since she talks softer than I do. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really looking forward to that. That's something else we need to add to it, huh? Yes. Yep, and yeah, bring in, and, and we are looking forward to doing that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And basically, since we can't run it through the HDMI on the camera, where the extra cost comes in, where I said it's about six to eight hundred dollars on there for the for the set, is because we have to get an external recorder. Yeah. For audio, it. that it can plug into the actual computer right. and or read and work with the cameras, work with yeah. the dual cameras. Yep. So. Yeah, a lot of tech stuff to get into yeah. uh, with this to keep offering better and better streams. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, my big thing that I've always wanted with this channel is to offer very high quality education. That's it. Like, that's my goal. I'm not entertainment. You're not going to get techno music and me, you know, fl doing backflips off my anvil or, <laughs> or any of this other. You're not going to see me dancing and cutting a jig across the shop or fooling around. I'm not that guy. I'm like your old wood shop teacher that's going to yell at you if you do something wrong. And that's kind of my teaching style. And, you know, because I take what I do very seriously and I take my time very seriously, I want to respect your time and not give, feed you a bunch of junk you don't need. I want to give you stuff that you do need that you're there for. Learning. You know, learning. If I can give you a textbook that follows up what I'm talking about, I want to give you a textbook. You know, if I can give you a more in-depth video, I want to give you a, a, a good in-depth video. That's, that's where I'm at with this. Mm -hmm. And so stuff like this live stream and better audio and better visual stuff, that's why we spent the money that we did on the cameras and the lights and, and the back set and stuff. Because we want you guys to be able to get in this information better so when i live present and i do a live stream demonstration you're not getting some rattly camera around the shop you're not getting weird you, you know camera angles where you can't actually see what the person's doing you're getting full engagement aren't you mm -hmm. honey mm -hmm. you're getting full engagement from me and you can get your questions asked and my hope is eventually that you know might even set it up to where you can follow along while you're forging you can follow a step-by-step -step project that i'm doing and it be high depth and in detail so you can see it you know again interested in teaching so mm -hmm. that's where those things are definitely definitely important mm -hmm. uh-huh yeah yeah <laughs> you kind of got a little long-winded on that one <laughs> oh oh did i just a little i didn't get long-winded right. oh well somebody somebody asked mm -hmm. when was i going to get that yeah. It just rolls into the purpose. Yeah, true. Why would you spend eight hundred dollars? Can anybody tell me in the comment section why would I go out and spend eight hundred dollars on microphones? It's just YouTube, <laughs> right? It's like I'm not trying to be a professional videographer or something, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? To provide better value. Mm-hmm. She's trying to tell me to get off the stream. She's being <laughs> quiet now. Everybody was saying goodbye. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They're saying good night to some other people. So, okay. well, good. <laughs> good night, everyone that needs to leave the stream. Jess, you need to go take care of the kids and uh, and bounce. I'm all right. I'll talk to him for another hour. You know I will. <laughs> I know you would. So, I'm just glad the CPU hasn't cut down again. Yeah, I think it's helpful elevating it. <laughs> he says no techo, techno. That's it. I'm out. Techno's <laughs> cool. Well, I may be dancing on my videos. Can't promise it will work. it'll be interesting. It would be interesting, ducks and Dixon. Wouldn't mind seeing that. So we can hear Jess. Lol. Yep. That's yeah, that's so. the answer why we would spend eight hundred dollars so you can actually hear Jessica. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's hard for me to speak up. I can only project my voice so much. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. All right, everybody. So thank you all for being a part of this live stream. We're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Thank you for everybody who came back after the technical glitch. I am really really glad that you all stuck with us and uh, have stuck with us this long on our channel mm -hmm. and uh, put up with us on the daily and all of our shameless pitches about the blacksmith cheat sheet there you go plugged it again <laughs> right uh Sorry. the power hammer plans and bundles that you can get to take and help you in that department um you know once again you can contact us um you know Pretty much any time, day or night, we won't answer. That's a promise. Um, you know, 
at uh, ChristCenterForge at gmail.com. You can send us pics of your latest work and stuff mm-hmm. you're messing with. And we really do appreciate that. Mm-hmm. It does take us a couple weeks to get back to you. And, uh, you know, we're sorry, but not sorry on that. Once again, there's 21,000 of you, and there's there's two of us. So, yeah. and, and mainly Jess. There's mainly Jess. <laughs> mainly and, and then I, I occasionally get in there. So, mm-hmm. But uh, once again... Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you join us on our Friday night live stream. We may have figured out this little problem here Mm -hmm. on CPO. It looks like it was overheating because we stacked it up on some books and it's doing better now. Yeah. So let's hope that that fixes it. We'll see you Friday night. We will continue on our live vice forging demonstration. Mm -hmm. And uh, make sure you check out the website. We've done some other plans. We've put some other plans up there and and things. Uh, The air texturing hammer Mm -hmm. uh, for rose petals and stuff. Graham, thank you for purchasing that. And everybody's already purchased Mm -hmm. that plan. Greatly appreciate you all. And uh, so I hope... Oh, (laughs) you have $800. Too much money in your account. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But but, uh, yeah, I hope everybody... I really hope everybody appreciates the streams, appreciates the videos. There'll be more of them coming out tomorrow. Yep. Like as usual. So since you've been mums the word, why don't you go ahead and sign off for tonight, baby? (laughs) All right. So Uh, we hope you have all of you have a wonderful evening, and we'll catch you on the next live stream and the next Monday. Well, tomorrow's Tuesday. Tuesday morning video post and our three at threes. Yep. So remember, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 p.m. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. And every Monday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., roughly, Eastern Standard Time. So thank you all once again for being here. We hope you guys have a blessed week, and we will see you very soon. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Have a great evening.